This podcast is for conversation and educational purposes only. I am not, Mm -mm. let me repeat, not Mm -mm. a mental health clinician that's allowed to give you medical advice to go do some dumb shit. Yes, I said dumb shit. I do curse to express my individuality. So if that offends you, then please don't motherfucking listen. Now y'all, enjoy the show. Are you tired of that bullshit? Tired of that bullshit. Toxic mm-hmm. people in relationships. Toxic people in relationships. You may be dealing with a narcissist. Are you dealing with a narcissist? Who put you down, down in every argument. Down in every argument. You might be fighting your depression. Are you fighting your depression? Trying to figure out the lesson. Damn, what's the lesson? Maybe you're looking for a soul. Where she at? Where he at? But the dance scene ain't looking great. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm two keys and I'm a time. I'm gonna help you lay them burdens down. So please enjoy this episode of the Sexy Nurse Chronicle. Welcome to episode 28 of the Sexy Nurse Welcome. Chronicles Mental Health Hip Hop yeah. Podcast. And it go a little something like this. Yeah, yeah. Check it. MP2 keys in this bitch. And you know I represent. Go by Kiki, call me two keys. Miss Shy in her running shit. MP2 keys in this bitch. And you know I represent. Go by Kiki, call me two keys. Miss Shy in her running shit. I'ma tell you about a love story about me. Okay. I used to be quiet. You couldn't hear a piece. Uh-huh. For you fat ass hoes that used to pick on me. Fat bitch. Now I pick y'all asses out my motherfucking teeth. And I gotta stay humble, but the real old me. Wanna come back for blood swap energy. But I won't miss my blessings, blessings, no. Cause you gon' reap everything you sow. MP2 keeps in it. for the men. Period. 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 Y'all, welcome to episode 28 of the Sexy Nurse Chronicles podcast. I am your host, Nurse Motherfucking Two Kids. How you do? This is a mental health podcast, y'all, where we sip tea. Y'all, where's your tea? If you're listening, you're listening right now, you ain't got to be tea. You all to be in a tea and be like, mm-hmm, where's my tea? Mm -hmm. and talk about love relationships and mental health if i am new to you and you enjoy this powerful episode please make sure that you hit that thumbs up and if it resonates with you and you know that it resonates with somebody else that needs to hear this make sure that you share it uh uh-huh and subscribe so we can feel this vibe okay so we get this algorithm going especially for my fellas this is for my fellas and y'all who are returning thank you Mm -hmm. and y'all heard in the song i said mp2 keys in this bitch y'all honey and y'all know i told you about graduation and graduating in may with my psych mp i started this podcast the same time i started school so y'all don't been with me this whole little journey but y'all don't know that i struggled to pass my um my nursing boards as a psych mp i had to take it twice honey the lord said you need to go back and recap on some things because we got some things for you to do and some things you need to know and i said okay and so i passed this week so mm -hmm. 
say hello to your new board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner. Call me in P two keys. However, like uh, the the disclaimer says, I am still not a mental health clinician that's allowed to give you medical advice to go through some dumb shit. Yes, I said dumb shit. However, I now have the letters behind my name to solidify my authority to speak on mental health topics and shit as an expert in my field. So, y'all, put some motherfucking respect on my name. <laughs> so, y'all, let's get to the good stuff. What we came here today, because in the song, too, I said, uh, this is for the men. This is for the men, yeah. Because a lot of women or a lot of people on social media, uh, especially women, we, we gear our stuff to women, but it can apply to men. But some men, there's been, especially the men that's been following my podcast, it's like, Kiki, you need a man's perspective. I said, you know what? Not only do I need a man's perspective, I'm going to make y'all a whole motherfucking topic for this episode. What men want? And by one of my good friends, honey, I had to bring a real nigga on a, on a mic like that. He, y'all, honey, don't let him fool you. Don't let him fool you. But you know what? I'm going to let you give the introduction. My friend, Terrence motherfucking ho, y'all give him some hand clap. What's good, what's good, this is Terrence. Terrence Ho, Nashville native, born and raised. So yeah, that's that's who I am. Okay, well tell us about you, like, oh, so where you, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Where you come from? Um, I grew up in North Nashville in the Bordeaux area. Bordeaux. Right, and we're both parents. My brothers, and that was it. That was us. Um, but, yeah, it was a normal childhood to me, you know, just, you know, I mean, being a kid, you know, nothing too out the ordinary now. You know, back in the day when we were growing up, that was when we could walk outside all day with a, till the street lights come on. Right. Or stay out all night and walk the street. Like, our parents weren't really mm-hmm. looking for us. They weren't right. checking for us. Now, it's these days... Time. Honey, my my Julia knows my eight year old. If it's a, a white van, there's an old man. <laughs> Do not take no right. candy. Do not take collect two hundred. Cause you better go. Right. Okay. Um, but you are also a man. Mm-hmm. You're a black man in America because you mm-hmm. are a professional. I am. What do you do? Uh, I work for an investment firm. You know, we do. You know, all of the. I hate to say the finance bro. Baby, you that's, need that's, finance. That's the thing. That's the thing <laughs> on social fine. media. Everybody's a finance bro these days. But Tell us who you are, though. Yeah, uh, we do full financial planning and estate planning. So life insurance, investments, and retirement planning. Also, the wills, the trust, and the power of attorneys. That's what we do in a nutshell. Mm, a one-man band when it comes to the legal side of. Because I'm a nurse. Mm-hmm. I know we need POAs. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we need you to sign the document, notarize it, say, hey, I'm able to fight for my loved one or talk to, for my loved one when they're not able to speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. So you do that, and then yeah. you do the whole burial. Okay, so let me ask you this, because mm-hmm. this is what all black people want to know. Right. Or me wanted to know. Mm-hmm. Make money. You mm-hmm. know, if I'm going to already pay for life insurance, mm-hmm. can I pay for life insurance that has the benefit of me pulling money out of it, like a 401k, like for a down payment for a house. Yeah, that's more than possible. Um, it's, it it's, so you have you have two types of insurance. You have uh, term, which is just that. It's going to last for a period or term amount of time, whether it's 10, 20, or 30 years. Then you have permanent insurance. So you got a whole life, universal life, index universal life. They all serve the same purpose, but, you know, they, um, as far as the mechanics of how they work, it's a little bit different. But, yeah, you can, you know, um, pull money out down the line, but I tell everybody, like, it's not like a piggy bank or a savings account that you pull from when you got to get some new tires or something like that. No, that's something that you want to ideally use in the later years of life, you know, not after five years because this is like a so it's a how long i gotta keep it in to pull money off of it to make money off of it so you can pull it out well i mean any time well, like you said it's not short term right. but like if i wanted to have a down payment for a house mm-hmm. and i'm horrible with saving mm-hmm. and i've had this insurance like can i do it for something like that or like what be an ideal to have to pull money out so out of the policy so yeah 
you can pull money out for a house, but you know, like we, like I tell everybody, it has to be enough cash in there to do that. So like you can't pay. Yeah. It's it's like, you can't put a hundred dollars into this and think you're going to pull out 20 grand in five years. No, that's not how that works. So do they got a higher paying one? Um, yeah. So, well, um, it all depends on how much it, it all depends on your contributions. And then also to, like the overall goal for it. So we don't want to just use this to pour money out for a house. Now you can, if the money is there, but like any type of cash accumulation vehicle that you're putting your money into, it has to be some type of goal for it. Not just getting it just for the sake of getting it. No, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, you can, you know, um, at the earliest somebody should pour money out will be at, this is just my opinion at the, 10 year mark. Oh, that's gonna be uh, a fat one, too. Yeah, that's gonna be a fat one. You know what? And we're gonna keep going. going. So, right. we're gonna, this is a tease, and we had the uh, cliff. This is a cliffhanger. So, his information will be in the description box below. And his information, if you need any, what, what, what do you do? Give me a list of everything you do again. Yeah, so for financial planning and estate planning. That's the easy way. Just say it. Yeah, that's, that's and all the, the other way. stuff. And if y'all need it, just rewind a little bit, and mm -hmm. y'all figure out what he too. So, and you're a black man, mm -hmm. African American I'm male. Yep. And I so every day. Yeah, every day, <laughs> every day, every day. I have to fight. <laughs> but okay, so mm -hmm. thank you for one for coming on the show. No problem. I appreciate you. You're welcome. You know. And y'all, this is just the part, y'all. This is for the men. So Terrence Holt is in the building. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about what men want. So, bruh. So let's talk about some common myths or stereotypes that society say. Okay. okay. Let's, let's, let's tap into it. Okay. Um, men are only interested in sex or physical appearance. What what where is sex and physical appearance in your your category? Is, is that true? So just what is it rank? What is it rank? Yeah. What is it rank? Or is it even true? And man, and we already know it ain't no only. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I say, two things can be true, but you know, of course, you, you initially you have to be a, attracted to whoever you're approaching or talking to. So, you know, looks is definitely going to be at the top for everybody. You know, regardless of what people say. And, you know, sex, you know, that's that's just part of it, you know. Like, like you don't want to be satisfied, you know, regardless of who you're with. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily what, you know, all guys are looking for, needless to say. But some, they are. You know, it just depends on where that person is in their where life, they you know, what life. they want, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's not just a, like, to, to say that or insinuate that that's a broad statement, you know that's not going to apply to everybody needless to say, but again, everybody's in a different place in their life, you know? So let me ask you this. How can us as women tell, or what are some signs that helps us women tell whether a man is in the right stage in their lives and the right stage for our life. And we can mesh together. Like, you know, you have it's stages to it. You just be like out here, you be on your little whole day, your little whole face. And then you got some that's trying to get their self together. They're not quite mm -hmm. ready to be in a relationship, but they good lovers. Mm -hmm. And then you got some that's like, okay, I'm ready, I'm down. Mm -hmm. You know, but like, how can you tell? Because sometimes y'all, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, will like you, and then we, sometimes we'd be confused. I mean, it's. I mean, really, like, it's no real way to tell, you know, because people are good fakers, you know. They can mm. they, they can show you anything, mm. but but you don't know what a person is thinking, you well, know. they can tell you anything. They'll tell you anything. anything but what do they show you? Well, but it's like they can show you a, 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 a complete different thing from what they're thinking, you know. Mm. Like, people, people's actions don't always match, you know, or just whatever's in their mind, you know, like. Like, at the end of the day, you know, like, I wouldn't put too much thought into trying to figure it out. But, you know, like, at the end of the day, like, you have to make yourself vulnerable to, you know. Be able to express to, what you're thinking. Yeah, you know, and, and to mm -hmm. potentially get hurt or misled. But, mm -hmm. like, you have to put yourself out there. There's no way around that now. Yeah. 
So for all y'all thinking y'all bitches gonna find a man, like, look, I'm just gonna go to work and go home. No, you gotta put some effort out there. Yeah. Even if it's online dating mm -hmm. or getting some clothes on. Yeah. You know, I online date because, honey, all I do is go to work and go home. <laughs> I don't want to be nobody from the Kroger's where I shop at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or the Walmart. Mm -hmm. But you never know. Yeah, you know. You never know. Yeah, it's, it's, again, at the end of the day, like, you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to make yourself vulnerable. Mm. So let's just jump on to the next stereotype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this stereotype is uh, men want to maintain control or power in relationships. Mm -hmm. So I have a, let's have a story, mm -hmm. but I've experienced men who want power in relationships mm -hmm. and to maintain control. Now, there's a time where you should, I think, as a man, you, you're a man. Mm -hmm. You got, I got to give you the wheel. Mm -hmm. But there was like, I don't know, there's some dudes that be super fucking irritating. You get to talking to them, they're like, one guy asked me, am I ready to get with a man's program? I, I don't know what the fuck that program is. I ain't never heard it before. Before, I mean, I'm running on my own program, but if you want to get together and if you can build a legacy, that's fine. But get with a man's program. Who the fuck do you think you're talking wow. to? Yeah, that's, that's, that's extreme. And so it is that you got some extremists out there. And you know what? A red flag for me, bitches. Y'all yeah. listen. If you get on the phone with a nigga and he irritates you through the conversation, do not go forward. Do not collect 200 or whatever. <laughs> Pass mm -hmm. on back. But how do you feel about men mm -hmm. maintaining control in relationships? Um, or the stereotype? You know, that's 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 all going to depend on the person, whoever you're talking to, ex whoever you're talking to experience, you know. But from a control standpoint, some people, some people misconstrue words. And then, you know, some people have different perspectives, different perspectives on, you know, certain topics, you know, and, and words. So control, some people can say he's controlling. He can say I'm I'm handling the situation I'm leading. And, you know, uh, just some guys can say, hey, like, she wants to, you know, quote, unquote, rest in her femininity. So that means I have to take control. Be soft. Yes, yeah, I so. do. I used to take more control because I'm used to being, mm -hmm. and you have them people mm -hmm. ooh, on, foot, on a Facebook post. Oh, you want to be independent? You want everything? What you need a man for? Now, we have to be independent because if we don't have nobody to lead, mm -hmm. we got to lead. Right. And it's hard sometimes to relinquish that mm -hmm. and let somebody because if i'm a fuck up my life i'd mm -hmm. rather be the one to fuck it up i don't need you to help me right especially if i got a good thing going but at the same time i think that i've got to nurse two keys y'all mp two keys then got to the i honey i want you to take the wheel mm -hmm. i'm tired of figuring out what we're gonna do every day i'm mm -hmm. tired i want somebody to catch me before i make a dumb mistake mm -hmm. yeah but but again mm -hmm. you know some people may say, ah, oh, he's controlling. He's running everything. He's not giving you the choice. He's not giving you the option to make a, a decision. So it's like, again, like, it, at least for me, it's like I'm not like a buzzword type of person. You know, it's all these buzzwords what out there. What does that mean, buzzword? You know, like basically, you know, controlling. Trigger words. Tr yeah, 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 essentially trigger words. Trigger words. So it's, yeah, so it's like I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I want a mm -hmm. woman that's submissive and... I want to leave. Like I don't even use those words because it's just like in the real world, Come you know, on, things baby. just things should just kind of happen how they happen, you know. Not not me trying to live yeah. up to this 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 word. No, man, all y'all hoes, y'all know. By the way, you know me and Terry, I love him to death, honey. He is. Uh, I look, y'all hoes, y'all know we are gonna capitalize off of it. He is an ugly, cute ass nigga. <laughs> he is, and he know it. But you know what I'm saying? Some people, you can, and you got some cute, ugly ass motherfuckers too. You know how to be looking a little special on the outside? Now he ain't that big, y'all. But uh, <laughs> getting to know him, it make you make him more handsome. You find it. And make him handsome, bitch. That's what you need, an ugly, cute-ass nigga. <laughs> y'all, we finna get some t-shirts, man. So for all the ugly-ass, cute-ass niggas listening, this is for the men. We got some merch on my website for you. I ain't even made it yet, but best believe it's going to be on there soon. Link in the description <laughs> box below. So give us some tips. Mm -hmm. on, you know what I'm saying? Like that submissive thing you said. Mm -hmm. um, like how how can you tell 
what's the difference between you as a man taking the wheel like I need you to, and you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm after I'm relinquishing. I wouldn't say submitting, but mm-hmm. I say relinquish. Don't that sound better? You know, mm-hmm. um, my well, side. So. Well, I was just gonna say like. I can't really give advice on how to be submissive. Or how to sub- how to spot a man that's controlling. Oh well, you know, like if he don't ever give you the option or choice to do anything, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. like it should be a situation where you're like, yeah, you know, like what do you want to do? You know, instead of just saying, hey, here's what we're doing, and then just shut the conversation down at that point because it's not even considering what you may or may not want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like it. Like, essentially, both people have to have a voice. And, you know, like, if you don't have a voice, then, you know, that's that's that sounds like a bad situation. Yeah. Red flag, bitch, on the play. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, the next stereotype or myth mm-hmm. is men don't need in intimacy or uh, communication. No, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, no. I, I mean, especially if his mom was in his life. You know, like men's first form of affection comes from his mom, you know, from typically from a, some form of a woman, or just his mom, his sister, his granny, whoever. So now over time, you know, like, you know, life happens and, you know, guys don't receive that, you know, as as well from, you know, like women or whatever, because of, you know, again, life happens. It's, it's, it's normally like, it's normally like a deeper conversation when it comes to that, when a guy doesn't want to receive those types of things. And it's normally something that happened, you know, down the line. A trauma. Yeah, some type of trauma. Yeah. But, yeah, but it's like, you know, like we're all human. Like we all need some type of affection, you know, intimacy, things like that for sure. You know us women, um, the older ones or the small ones, will judge a relationship based on the guy's interaction or relationship with his mama because the thing is it's like if you don't love your mama how you gonna love a woman i mean because you got some men that's disrespectful to their mama i'm sorry red flag on the play bitch yeah yeah and, and, you know, even with that, you know, like, again, two things can be true. Like, Trauma. like we don't know what, they've been through. what she put him through. You know, like, she could have abandoned him as a child. She could have put the next man in, uh, ahead, of, ahead, ahead of him all the time. You know, like, he, like he could have seen her be abused or she could have abused him. She could have let the boyfriend abuse. Like, like we That's don't know. That's me. Everything you just said is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's Everything like... Everything you just said is, is what I went through. Mm-hmm. Why so, I'm estranged from my mom. Now, I ain't so, cussing the bitch out. Right. But, yeah, but, I did. I swear, my mom used to let um, her boyfriends uh, whip my ass. Mm-hmm. I still think about them. Um, and there was some that I didn't even deserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, but and, I wasn't protected. Right. And, and you know, that happens to little boys as well, too. So it's like, it's just like mean. before we, like before we judge people, it's best to kind of actually get to know them first mm-hmm. to kind of see how they, why they do the things they do. And, you know, like if you're dating somebody or in a relationship with them, like it may take time for them to open up to you. They're not just going to pour all it out, you know, initially or too soon because, you know, that could like, they be doing it to me. Well, yeah, and and, and, I think and some people will. Thursday. I'm nurse two keys. Like you get it mm-hmm. with me, we gonna talk about y'all. And I want to know because yeah. I'm a go early. <laughs> yeah, and and well, you know, I need to run. <laughs> you know, first day. <laughs> and and it's like I get it, but you know, like everybody's not gonna be You're right. But you just listen to me. I was about to judge somebody else, mm-hmm. and everything you told me, mm-hmm. that was me. Yeah. Yeah, just like I deal with trauma, mm-hmm. of being 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 put over me, mm-hmm. being neglected, right? Stick up on my home. But it's like you know, like those things aren't. They don't defy. Well, that, but also too, it's like people rarely associate men going through those types of things unless they actually talk to it. It's like we don't get that benefit of the doubt initially, versus a woman. You know, like it's like okay, like what's what's going on with her? Like, mm-hmm. but again, like a guy has to physically say it. But, but, you know, women, they initially get that benefit of the doubt. We don't. And that's why this episode is for the men. I want to hear all about it. We want to hear all about it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and just link, because, you know, mental health. Mm-hmm. 
the mental health podcast, these stereotypes, they're linked to anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, mm-hmm. emotional suppression. Mm-hmm. Men ain't allowed to say how y'all feel. With us as kids, really black, well, where I came from, mm-hmm. uh, we didn't, we weren't allowed to talk back. We weren't allowed to, and they even talk about just have feelings or mm-hmm. just say how I feel. If you do, you getting smacked, you getting beat the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. think how it is. That's me as a black girl. Mm-hmm. And now you a black guy. You you can't do it with nobody. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have a society. And how do you think that leads to anxiety? I depression? Mean, yeah, it, it, it's like, it, like, you know, like anxiety and depression, you know, that can be stemmed from a lot of things. But, mm-hmm. you know, part of, you know, people people wanting to raise their kids better than what they was raised, you know, part of that, that, like like part of that conversation that never gets talked about that much is being a better parent and it's not necessarily like giving them everything that's talking to your kids and and understand you know asking them like why are you mad why are you doing this or what did i do to you to make you mad you know because you can make a child mad some people that's like oh they'd be okay they're a child no you need to and then you apologize yeah, and, and let them you know, know I was what? wrong. I never got to apologize. Can mm-hmm. I be apologizing to my kids? I can't leave that on my heart. Yeah. I apologize because I never got a, a, an apology. Yeah. It's always, well, I'm your mama, I'm mm-hmm. this, or we throw it off and we do this. or No, like, I never got an apology. Yeah, or it's, well, hey, you only get one mama, but or it's economy. never. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like that's a toxic statement. Come on like, now. You got to. Come on just, now. It's just like. It is. You shouldn't. It, it's like you shouldn't there shouldn't be a situation where you dismiss uh, 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 your validity right and it just your just all for the right uh, all just to say that hey you only get one mama regardless of what she does to you know thank that's you. silly thank you that's why i talk about my podcast the first 10 episodes <laughs> y'all listening thank you yes mm-hmm. and so and i want to be and you know we always Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure my mom gave me a better life mm-hmm. than what she had. Mm-hmm. But you know, like it should, and and we try to as parents to mm-hmm. give our children the best life that we didn't have. Mm-hmm. We try, like you said, try not to spoil them. Mm-hmm. But like my kids, I'm so grateful because they see, they understand what I've been through. Mm-hmm. They hear me. Mm-hmm. Not only they hear me, they see in the forefront. Mm-hmm. So when a motherfucker's talking about, oh, you only get one mama. Bitch, you ain't been in my household. You don't know what the fuck I go through or what mm-hmm. I've been through. Because if you did, you. But anyways, mm-hmm. so yes. Yeah. So let's let's go a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We are gonna go a little bit deeper. <laughs> so we 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 talked about intimacy earlier, and I know and, and physical and the physical. Let's talk about intimacy beyond the physical because we know. You you want to explain to us what what do men want? What do men look as intimacy as? Because people think it's just sex. We don't uh, think sex, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I feel like you know, like you said, people think it's it's an it's a sexual act, and it's not. It's you know, like basically, what helps create bonds with each other, and you know, like help help build the vibe. So it can be like y'all just watching tv together y'all just taking a walk together like building that bond so it's not necessarily about anything physical all the time now yeah it's holding hands Mm -hmm. it's pillow talking Mm -hmm. it's going to concerts it's going on dates that's intimacy Mm -hmm. and so knowing that men y'all do want emotional intimacy and be and y'all want to be vulnerable you know a lot of us women do too but it's just like, a lot of times, it's harder for men to articulate emotional intimacy. So, look, here, what are some signs mm-hmm. <laughs> that your man wants emotional intimacy? Dave, is that even a question? Um, like with that, like I feel like you have to kind of know the person. And sometimes person just got to spill it out. You know, you can't read minds. But, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, with guys, guys generally don't show their hand that quick no so that's why it takes some guys longer to like try to make things official or try to get married versus women like they kind of show their hands like really quick with you know Mm. how they feel which is nothing wrong with that but it's just not how guys normally operate now so how do you know 
if it's even worth waiting on the man to show his hand. Oh. Or, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because you, you like you right. And so I done showed my hand. I've been vulnerable first. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm embarrassed or I'm shy or I'm, because I don't know if I'm going to get the same back in return. When some women jump and get, they get the man that they want. Mm-hmm. And then some men might just, like, leave you on silent, leave you on red or ghost you or, you know, just, how can you tell? Um, like at the end of the day, time tells everything. Like it's That's it's it. like there's there's nothing you can look for. That's it, um, y'all. He says all the right things, y'all. Y'all, you know this <laughs> cute ass nigga, honey. Oh, your fans is gonna be fine. They're gonna be so proud of you. Yeah, and, time. And yeah, just time. And you know, like it's nothing wrong with, you know, if it's taking too long for you, just I mean, hell, just back away. You know, just ask them. You know, periodically, like. You know, what are we doing? How do you feel? And, you know, the only thing you can hope for is a person being transparent. Like, just just don't over, overthink things. But but also, too, don't expect somebody just to, to, to just jump the gun, like, after a month or so now. I got it. But you know what? You're right. I used to be that way. Last mm-hmm. episode was on attachment styles. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was on that secure, that it wasn't secure, it was one of them attachment styles. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I was so in love with this guy. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with him. You know, liked him more than he liked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, I didn't get that in return. So eventually over time, you stop doing it. It hurt. Mm-hmm. Because you want to feel that, you know, or you keep on going through the same little spin in the block. But it's like, it, it takes time now for people, like you said, Men don't show their hand right away. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to wait it out to see he's going to show his hand or not. And after a while, like you said, you taking too long, back the fuck up. You know what I say. Cut that bitch off. And that's song, period. Okay. <laughs> 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 I love it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So now let's explore validation and respect. Okay. How does the need for respect, val- validation, and recognition and your relationships matter, like, where respect. Yeah, I mean... What does that mean? What does respect mean for you? I mean, respect is, you know, like, you know, just treat me how I treat you, you know. Like, don't don't try to belittle me. Don't try to, you know... Um, gaslight. Yeah, gaslight things like that. Like, just treat me how you would treat your brother or your dad. Like, it's just like, it's like, don't try to little brother me, you know. No, don't try to be a little bro. Mm-hmm. Put you in a mm-hmm, talk sheet. Right. Like, bitch. I may not you brother. You don't think something like that. You don't think something like that. Just being all toxic and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Red flag on the play, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Period. And then there's, like I said, validation. How do you feel about, what does validation mean to you as a man? Uh, I mean, you know, I feel like everybody needs some form of validation from the person they would, you know, that's, that's like a, to me, that's a natural thing. But what does that mean for people don't know that word validation? Um, well, it, well, you know, that, you know, this person is with you, like there's nobody else, like they, they really like you, they're into you, you know, things like that. Um, just so it doesn't make them feel insecure. Yeah. That, or like. Uh, make an open up a door to like, damn, I wonder if she if she messed me like that or how she really feel. Like mm-hmm. people, people like to hear great things about themselves. I mean, people need to know that they feel you know, validated, like they're important. Yeah, and, and, and of course, important to you. Yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. And like to take a little step further, but I, you know, my research and validation and how I feel about it. Validation is means valid. Mm-hmm. It take the dation off. Valid. Mm-hmm. That means it's good. Yeah. That means your feelings matter. Yeah. That means you matter. Mm-hmm. That means how you feel matter. You're validated Correct. in how you feel. Correct. You're right. And a lot of times in relationships, you, 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 who you with, if you with the wrong person, honey, y'all are like, yo, yo, dude, or your woman is the enemy. Mm-hmm. And we should be on the same team. I agree. And we will communicate. I should feel validated. If I feel I'm not validated, I'm finna get the what? I finna do what? Cut that bitch off. Okay. Stop playing with me. And how do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel about recognition, being recognized in the relationship? I mean, that's kind of, it kind of goes hand in hand with validation. But being recognized. Yeah, I mean, like if it's, you know, like the best 
it's like outside of telling a person like I I like what you got going on. I appreciate you. You know th- those types of things. You know, like hell, buy them something. People I like to see you. you. People like to see mm-hmm. you know, like you spend money on. Them. That's that's mm-hmm. how it is. And it, it's, it don't have to be anything expensive. But like hell, like show them, show them love in that way. That's what people appreciate mm-hmm. the most. You know. Mm-hmm. I recognize that you're here. Right here, you go. We love you, mm-hmm. my black men. Mm-hmm. As it's white men listen to, we love y'all too. <laughs> this is for all the men. All right. right, this is for all the men. And so, I want you to explain how important it is because men like women, mm-hmm. we want to feel valued. We mm-hmm. want to feel heard. Mm-hmm. We want to feel appreciated, mm-hmm. especially when we make our own emotional and personal efforts. You know, it kind of go back to what we said before. Mm-hmm. And it's not being reciprocated. Reciprocation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's important though, right? Yeah, I mean, like, like who wants to feel like that they're always giving and getting nothing in return, mm-hmm. you know? Um, you know, and it's this, this it's so common for, I t- I, like my thing is, is what people say online versus the real life normally don't align with each other. You know, like this whole, oh, I'm not going to, Buy man nothing. I'm not gonna do this and do that. And and he real gonna life, pay and, me because I got the busted wide open. Nah. He gonna pay all my bills and I ain't gonna get him shit. No, like in real That's life, they they tricking. Yeah. They yeah. I don't care what nobody say. Yeah, they, it ain't money if you got it though. That's what they say. It ain't tricking if you got it, baby. What a what a what a sugar that is. This is for the man. Ooh. Yeah, because I don't know. It's just like <laughs> I don't know. Funny. Like it's like I don't know one woman who don't like buying the person they with stuff now. Yeah. So you know, like. I mean, come on now. Let's be real. Okay, it ain't tricking that you got it. Mm-hmm. Ow, ow, ow. So let's talk about, y'all, we just dropping them. Y'all, if there's anything that we saying right, real right, real quick, real quick, um, that you agree with, make sure you drop a comment. Let's keep this algorithm going because this world need to get to somebody. Some of y'all means out there, send it to your daddy, send it to your uncle. Where the uncle said, what it is anyway? I'm a cougar. Ow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me stop. Shameless advertisement. <laughs> uh, but no. Um, and like, share, subscribe, please. Because this ain't, th- ain't going to be the last baby. I'm going to talk to my men's and things, tiny. All right. Because us women, we want to know. And until you know better, you do better. Right. Right. All right then. Mm-hmm. So, let's dive into the stigma um, that men they're supposed to be strong all the time. You can't show no emotion. Like I, I seen my cousin like back in the day, and my uh, uh cousin was acting that brave as kid, like punched him in the chest, and was just like, "Man, shut the fuck up!" Bow, like shut the fuck up, like you know what I'm saying. Like men are not supposed to be emotional, right? Um. And it make it it makes it hard for y'all to ask what y'all want, does it? Mm-hmm. Or has that stigma? What about that? Mm, I mean, you know, um, like we just live in a world where you know guys are supposed to be dominant. So, you know, like certain things can kind of be well, certain habits can kind of be hard to break, you know. And I feel like that's that's part of the problem. But like it's it's just kind of like it's one of those things. It is what it is, you know. Just gotta just find a way to work around it. But it's okay for you to cry though. Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. Do you cry? Mm-hmm. You yeah. be crying for real? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean a... you so emotional. It's like he's so cool. Like this dude is the coolest dude ever. <laughs> like he showed no emotion. He don't. I don't know. He get nervous if a if a if a giraffe and a butt naked bitch was to run <laughs> past this room right now, he'd be looking like okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like it's it's a human. It's a natural emotion. I mean, even animals cry. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just part of it. You just got to, you know, again, like I said earlier, learn to be vulnerable. Yeah. Not being vulnerable. It's okay, black being. I love you. Mm-hmm. As your psychiatric nurse practitioner, I can give you this advice. It's okay to cry. Because mm-hmm. you, you keep that shit bottled in. Yeah. You know who you finna sound like. I mean, like you, you don't think something like that. You don't think something like that. Yes, so <laughs> that's how we be sad to be toxic. Um, so you have any advice or anything you want to give to the men out here listening when it comes to mental health, emotional uh, needs? You know, I mean, at the end of the day, put you first, put you on your needs first. 
Because hell, like if you don't like, it's it's like you shouldn't give your all to somebody else if you can't give it to yourself. So, mm. you know, just whatever that looks like, whether it's you know taking a walk, exercising, therapy, you know, journaling, things like that. You know, uh, just just do what's gonna make you feel better, and as long as it's in a healthy way, you know. Mm. I love it, mm-hmm. and you know, since for the men, y'all, y'all know to have my little segment. We're gonna break this up a little bit. <clears throat> And we're finna get into a surviving love segment that I love. This is where I talk about my dating experiences. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Surviving love with two kids. Dun, 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 dun. Surviving dun, 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 dun. love dun, 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 dun. with dun, dun, dun. nurse dun, dun, dun. two kids. Dun, dun, dun. You gotta be a bad dun, dun, dun. Daddy. for me to call you daddy. Dun, dun, dun. If you want dun, dun, dun. to fuck dun, dun, dun. with me. So, the stories are real, but the names have been changed to protect the not. It's so innocent. Okay. And on this episode of Surviving Love with Two Kids, we're going to name this man. Thomas. Thomas. You're going to name him Thomas. I like it. The old, he's, he's the older man. Uh, my first, I would say, he, but he's not a sugar daddy though, because I never, it was never transactional. Mm-hmm. I really liked him. Mm-hmm. He's just an older man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we gotta know what the story is. Yet. We're gonna name him Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> you know, we ain't gonna get my fucked up name because he probably gonna be listening to this episode. And I, you know, we cool. We still cool. Right. To this day, but it's just like this was a man. That I was just like, I really didn't like it first. I felt like we were like opposites. Mm. And I feel like, you know, his stature, he's tall, the way he dressed, mm. the way he kind of act. Remind me of my daddy. My daddy who a tall ass nigga. Right. I don't like my daddy, my daddy. Or I date none. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this man, he actually has a master's degree mm-hmm. in IT technology. He got a bachelor's degree. He did all this when he was 40. So he's like, he's just now really in his prime. Right. And he's, like, excited to be here. And, you know, he's, like, he glad that I met him then. And I will say, since I met him, and this is really with me, bro. That's why I need advice. Mm-hmm. Y'all need advice. Y'all, I come to honey. Y'all, that's what do men want. Right. Um, he's really smart. Mm-hmm. He has a lot going for himself. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, when it comes to money, Cause he did. He said, "Honey, y'all, I'm telling y'all, bitch, he done cut up. And he listening, honey. He done pay out my rent one month. Mm-hmm. Bitch didn't know what she was gonna do. Mm-hmm. Took kids out for a whole, pay for a whole trip. Mm-hmm. I know, bitch, be like, ooh, girl, you got you a good one. Fuck that. I don't give a fuck what he say. We keep him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's done been um, a role model to my kids. Right. And my kids fuck with him. One right. thing about me is when you date me." If my kids don't have your approval, you ain't got mine either. Right. Because we talked about that earlier. Mm-hmm. When your parent done put me in before you. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I know how that felt as a kid. I didn't have that protection. Mm-hmm. My kids, a lot of times, kids can really tell you when people are weird, mm-hmm. even if they can't explain it. And them motherfuckers be pedophiles and shit. Yeah. You better, y'all, women better do your research. I know you love a motherfucker so much. You better get on that sex registry. Uh, uh, little thing so you right. can look them up because, mm-hmm. honey, y'all know about four or five episodes ago. I told y'all about it, but you know, when it comes to bringing men around your kids, like he was the ideal, right? I know, but see, like, like you said before, mm-hmm. how do you know what are tips to know if you putting your investing your, your time in the right person? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes time, yeah, that's it. And we had a good relationship, good run, but then the bickering came. About two months into it. Because with me, if you last two weeks, okay, you cool. Mm-hmm. You last a month, all right, we great. Mm-hmm. You know, you last two months, okay, you probably going to be here for real, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. But my benchmark is four months. <laughs> At our four months mark, I was like, do I want to keep it or do I want to not? Mm-hmm. 
Right. You see, you heard the podcast and heard about them yet. Mm-hmm. So uh, that I want to keep running. It's just like sometimes people are there just for a blessing mm-hmm. or just for a lesson mm-hmm. or just for a season or for a reason. Yeah. And for once, the universe was telling me, Kiki, it's okay to receive. And he had, I give him that. But, I, bro, some women would have been like, bitch, you should have kept him. But I'm just mm-hmm. like, when you get to arguing and bickering about shit, when a, a motherfucker don't know how to agree to disagree, mm-hmm. how do you feel about agreeing to disagree? Because I mean, you, you, I'm sure you don't got into mm-hmm. spats or, you know, disagreements. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, like both people got to be mature enough to just say, hey, you know, like we're not just going to keep talking in circles. It's just, let's just kind of, you know, leave it where it's at and move on from it. Well, let's kiss and stuff, and am I hungry? <laughs> right. Yes, and I'm gonna eat. And I'm like, okay, boy, bye. <laughs> and then we gonna eat, and we gonna be rub my rub my rub my feet together. We gonna be in the bed. We gonna <laughs> right. go home. <laughs> right. I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, um, and I do think of them often, mm-hmm. and I appreciate them. Right. And, you know, and and before I just the last bickering session, because mm-hmm. this is the thing. This mm-hmm. is what happened. Mm-hmm. My birthday came up. Right. We did not have sex. Yeah. That's My birthday weekend. Mm-hmm. Took me on a whole trip. Mm-hmm. When I wanted to have sex, he was sleeping. Right. So when the bitch jacked off, <laughs> I'm just saying, look, this podcast was the grown up. And, he, and I, I'm, I, I'm getting frustrated. I can't reach my climax. And you mm-hmm. sit here laying right next to fucking me. Right. And you not fucking me. Yeah, that's... That first day. Right. But then the second day turned this on me. Then one mm-hmm. time he did. Then I'm a, mm-hmm. You know, we're going to have this conversation. Right. Because, okay, so men, y'all like to, you know how the women be sleeping, we be on our side, mm-hmm. put y'all dick on our booty. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the dick be getting a little hard, dang. If you start deep, you really mm-hmm. hunching kind of mm-hmm. to you, you know what I'm saying, she move over. But when y'all poke at the first hole that y'all feel, that's mm-hmm. our booty. Right. Okay. Right. I'm a nurse, so let me break it down to you. Yeah, it might be cool, poke around the booty, it might feel good, but thing is, eventually you're gonna find the right hole. Right. And you're gonna put it in that hole. Right. But if you don't poke around my booty, you don't took the the bacteria mm-hmm. from my booty right. to my cootie. Right. Okay. And that's where bacterial vaginosis come from. Mm-hmm. pH imbalance. Right. You know, niggas, y'all need to, when you do it, let me look, you can hear my chair moving from the, you, when you, when you move the big on the booty, move up and slide back. Don't slide back and go up. Okay. Right. But when I, when I said that to him the next time, uh-huh. he had an attitude about, oh, I know da 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 da. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I'm speaking up for myself. Right. And my body. Right. And I got to argue about that, baby. You got to go. I did a little trip. It, it it was cool. So it was a and he's a talkative person. Mm-hmm. You know, old people like to talk. Right. He's an older man. Right. Sometimes he talk so much, I be like, Lord, you find anything to talk about. <laughs> we be talking. I be looking at you right now. Look at my friend. Mm-hmm. Then we go. He'll he'll turn around and talk about that uh that candle right there. Right. Where the candle came from. Mm-hmm. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Right, right. And get down there and do what the fuck you supposed to do. Right. Okay. Or just shut up. And let's just we can we can be together in the same space. Right. And we don't have to talk. Mm-hmm. We can be in this together in the same house. I could be upstairs and you could be downstairs. Right. I used to be a married before. Right. Babe, we and we good. Right. But all that talking of talking of that jap 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 and shut the fuck Damn. up. So I ain't get no dick for Damn. my whole birthday. We can wow. nigga done spend all this money, all this time, effort, and energy to take me out for my birthday. Uh yeah, honey. Yeah, uh honey, that was a long ride home. Oh, I bet. He already knew. He came in, gave me a hug and everything. Like we dropped off our luggage at my house and mm-hmm. it was like, Hey, we didn't you we didn't cause you know I like to gamble. Mm-hmm. So he was a gentleman. Right. And he did take me on a gambling trip. So mm-hmm. like, he gave me money every day. Right. But that last night I was so frustrated, we didn't even gamble. So he waited till we got home. Hmm, right, they quiet right home in Nashville. Right. And gave him hundred dollars. Like, look, we didn't spend this last night. Mm-hmm. So here's for you. I'm gonna take it. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. But that don't change a motherfucking thing. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do. What is that? Cut that bitch off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
But you know what? I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Right. I'm just saying I'm learning through my experiences. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of women would have been like, okay, he got money. He did this for you. He did that for you. What's the argument bickering? Bitch, I'm not settling. Right. Yeah, you shouldn't. This motherfucker will turn into dust and cobwebs. <laughs> Before I, I, I let a, you know, nigga right. that, that take me through there. Right, right. What's up? What you think? I mean, I, obviously I can't speak for him, but, you know, it's it's like a lot can be assumed, you know, but I would just ask him, like, you know, just uh, just ask him, you know, just straight up, just like, you know, like, why did nothing happen? Like, what's going on? No, we didn't have to go there because you already fucking know. You took me to my birthday for my birthday, and you, we should have been fucking from the time we got to the hotel room mm-hmm. to get that quick one in. Right. Went back, had a good time. Right. Drink, come back to the room, fuck again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then in the morning, if we want something, we ain't got to. Right. But you know, I didn't, we didn't have sex the whole time. Yeah, Thomas. That's, that's a bit odd. Thomas. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a wash. Thomas. But you know what? And then, you know, the, I'm saying the, the, the questioning mm-hmm. of a woman because I'm an overthinker. Mm-hmm. I ain't talked to him since he probably didn't find him another little thing because the way he clung to me, mm-hmm. you would think, like, he got to cling to somebody. But I, but I do believe, though, if I needed something right now to this day, mm-hmm. he would still heal me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and vice versa. And I look at him for him too, but like sometimes people just there for a season, mm-hmm. a reason, a lesson, a blessing. Right. I appreciate you, Thomas, <laughs> but you should have fucked the shit out of me and, and, and cut your fucking mouth and stop all that bickering, honey. Right. Happy wife, happy life. Right. Anyway, so right. y'all, this is the end. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut it short. And this is for the men. Thank you, Terrence. No problem. For, no thing. For coming in and loving on this podcast and speaking for the men right everything will be in the description box below mm-hmm. y'all get your life insurance on and let's right. make some money off of it too we don't have to wait about 10 years baby it's gonna be a good check okay right. <laughs> right. this ain't no prime america no 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 shots out to prime america because i thought he was trying to sell me at first when we were talking like as, as adults not as high schoolers uh-huh. uh he's gonna sell me to be, to be like a pyramid scheme no and that right. i ain't saying prime america is a pyramid scheme y'all do no, not y'all they don't beat me up no. don't beat me up because i can't fight <laughs> no, I can fight for real, but no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna fight y'all with that, honey. You know I mean? right. Make your money where you make your money. Right. If it's prime miracle or with Terrence Hope, mm-hmm. get your life insurance. Yeah, we can do that. Get your family. Take care of your family. Take care mm-hmm. of your people. Love on your people. Right. Thank you for another episode. Officially, MP Two Keys in this bitch, and we are out. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Peace. (laughs) (laughs) Bye.